Hey there, my name is Griffin Gonzalez for the Hoosier Network. Welcome to The Sit Down with Tom Allen, an in-depth three-part interview series that will go in-depth with the Indiana football head coach on everything heading into the 2021 season and more. In today's part of the series, we talk to Tom just about what makes Tom Allen, well, Tom Allen, and what direction is this program heading right here on The Sit Down. All right, joining me now, Coach Allen. Coach, thanks so much for the time. I want to take you back first off to December 2016. Hard to believe it was five years ago mm -hmm. where you're named the head coach of this program. Not interim. We're mm -hmm. jumping right into yeah. that head coach gig, and critics weren't shy to come after you day one there, sure. saying you weren't the right guy, mm -hmm. like Indiana did not make a big enough splash of a hire, sure. and that you weren't ready. Yeah. Five years later, you've made quite the splash here. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, let's just look at the record. Four seasons at Indiana, you've set the record for most wins by a head coach in Indiana history in their first four years. Coming off a hot past two seasons in Big Ten play, and you're just named Coach of the Year in the Big Ten in 2020. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you want to give credit to the team, but if you don't mind, when you lay your head down at night, what goes through your mind when you look back on the past five years and the difference you've been able to make? Well, I just feel blessed. I feel blessed for the opportunity. I feel blessed that uh, Fred Glass and President Robbie and the, the board believed in me, you know, back then when many others did not. And uh, I'm just really thankful for the players that have chosen to believe in us and come here before we won, you know, and before we broke through. And, and the same with the staff. Just, uh, I guess for me, it's just, it's always about the people around you. I'm only as good as the assistants I have, and we as coaches are only as good as the players we coach. But uh, yeah, I mean that sincerely. I mean I just. Uh, uh, but if you told me this was all going to happen, I don't know if I'd have believed you. You know, I mean I just. Uh, I just feel like I've just been. The good Lord above has given us a tremendous opportunity here. We're trying to take full advantage of it. Something we hear you talk about a lot is culture and mm -hmm. the culture of this program. And I think that starts with you a little bit as the head coach. When you look at the culture of the program, I got to ask, what makes Tom Allen tick? We see the running on the sidelines, we see you tackling guys, the yeah. celebration. What, yeah. what, what brings that out of you? Oh, you know, I've been asked many times just about the energy, and you know, I just believe this: when you know in your heart that you are living the very life that you were created to live, I think it creates passion. You know, it creates energy. Um, I know my purpose, and I believe it's to to be a be a football coach and impact lives through this great sport of football. And, and uh, to know that we're making an impact in the lives of these guys is, man, that, that fires me up, you know. And, and, and I love coaching. I mean, I don't have to, like, get myself pep talk every day to come into work. And I enjoy the practices. I love the games. And I love our players. And, and I like to, you know, I'm a high-energy guy. I don't sit still very well, you know. I'm pretty hyperactive. But... But so it just kind of, it's natural for me to be this. I don't, don't drink coffee. <laughs> I don't, uh, you know, I guess I'm naturally caffeinated. But, but uh, I just like that. But I think the core of it is, man, I just, I believe so strongly in what we're doing and that it's so much bigger than football. That's why I think it creates so much energy. I like what you said there. It's so much bigger than football because I think when you hear from some of your players, you get a lot of that same mentality mm -hmm. and you kind of see it come to them. And in age in college athletics, where it seems we're talking about the me first athlete, you got a team of guys where every time we talk to them as the media, they're talking about the team, the team, the team. Yeah. So my question is for you, when you look at the generation of the college athlete today, that's more me first, how did you get a group of guys together, mm -hmm. over a hundred of them, 18 to 22 something year olds to get them to believe in a team identity? Yeah, that's a great that's a great question because it's it's probably the most important thing to building a team you know and that's where leo to me comes into play and when i first you know, even in this very room and wrote it on that board right over there uh, on our very first meeting when i was the dc here and asked them if they knew what those three letters meant and, and they didn't but but i even at that moment i told them i said when you guys truly understand this and you buy into this it's going to be the difference in this program and and i said here's the beauty of it when you buy into understanding man, it's not about me and I don't really care who gets the credit, um, it's amazing what a team can accomplish and when that occurs. And when the team does well, who gets recognized? The individuals. So it's not like that you're we're asking you to just make this totally about everybody else and you just have to stay on the side and get nothing in return. Well, you know, if you truly buy into this, I promise you, you will get rewarded. You know, don't know to what degree, but uh, I think the biggest reward is just the, the peace of mind and, and the, 
the, the understanding that, man, I'm part of something that's way bigger than me. There's meaning to it. You know, it's just all about you, even when you have success. I mean, what does that really, what does that really mean? I mean, like, there's, a, there's no way a celebrated locker room has any value whatsoever if you're the only guy in there. Absolutely. I mean, we joke about it. It seems silly. You would never be in there celebrating by yourself. But it's the people. Yeah. It's, it's who you did it with. And, and the team is, is why. So getting guys to understand that has been critical, and it's, it's a big part of our success. And so to me, there's no question that that's going to be the key for our future success as well. And you've talked in interviews about how you're trying to recruit guys mm -hmm. to be your fit in your program. Yeah. So when you're trying to fit that, I guess for you when you're on the road, how do you balance finding that fit mm -hmm. but also finding some of the best talent in the country? Well, I, I think uh, you still, who they are, does it change when you say, okay, I'm looking for this kind of guy, you know, yeah, you know, I just need to get that kind of guy that's got talent, you know, like, and this, the, but the kind of guy that you're looking for doesn't change. You're just trying to find guys that maybe are bigger, faster, stronger than, than, than guys that uh, uh, maybe even been here in the past to try and elevate the level of play. But if you compromise the character piece and the fit piece just to get bigger, faster, stronger, I think that uh, it won't work. You know, and so I just, we refuse to buy into that or, or change that part of our culture. Well, clearly something's working because you've been on a tear the past couple of months in the mm -hmm. recruiting world, have you? I mean, well, the, the kids are, here's the thing. I think that, um, you know, everybody wants to be in an environment where they're loved and cared for. I don't think that's, anybody would disagree with that. Um, the, the challenge is how do you make that part of football, you know, in a tough guy sport that's supposed to be this, and supposed to be that. But what I've learned is, that when you hold guys accountable and you, you love them and care about them way more as a person as a player, and you can, you can even be harder on them yeah. than you can be if it's just because I said so, you know, or out of fear or intimidation just to try to motivate. And so when there's a relationship and there's a genuine, you know, man, this guy, he, he cares about me more than just football. He's not, he's not just trying to use me to win football games. And, 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 I, and I truly am not. That's not my goal. I mean, to me, I get it. We get judged by the scoreboard as a program, and I do as a coach, but that doesn't define me as a man. And so when you have that purpose and you, that is really something that's passionately part of your life, I don't think you can – the kids know. They know when it's the case. And so – but I think in recruiting, you know, that, that environment, you know, is, is a positive thing. And then you show you can do that and win football games, you know, it's even more appealing. Why? Because people want to be at a place where you have a chance to get, have success. And, and they, you know, these guys have goals and dreams and aspirations that they want to accomplish one day. And so uh, I just think that we're just showing this, this country that you can come to Indiana and, and get a world-class education and be a part of a great culture and, and have a chance to win a lot of football games. Wow, what a way to start off. We'll be back on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern with part two of the series where Tom Allen will talk to us about the 2020 season and going into 2021, what we can expect from that offense and loaded defense this season. For the Hoosier Network, I've been Griffin Gonzalez. We'll see you right back here Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m.